So also joining us today is Cheryl Haggard. She's 54 years old and is a stay-at-home mom to three adult children. I'll let her tell you more about that in a minute. In 2017, she was diagnosed with tracheal stenosis along with previously diagnosed reactive arthritis and ankylosing spondylitis. In 2000, that was all in 2008. And then GPA ankyovasculitis in, in July 2022. So not actually that long ago. Um, I'm going to pick up kind of where um, where we left off here, and that is that when I was diagnosed with ankylosing spondylitis, which is a it, it is a um, autoimmune disease of the spine. Um, I was being treated with rituximab, I think is what it's called. And um, it was just, I was constantly getting sick. Let's jump to 2017. I got my trach because I had a, it was just a lot of fires that year. And here in that area, and we lived kind of in a bowl a little bit with a you know, um, outside of Boise and there was so much smoke in the air. And I thought for sure, I was just having asthma problems and I, or whatever, you know, everybody's got asthma, you know, whatever. I didn't even think about my, my immune system, my autoimmune system. Um, and so, um, what happened was, is, um, my husband, who is an asthmatic, threw me in the shower after football practice. He's also been a coach, high school football coach for years. Um, he said, let's get you in the shower. As soon as he got home and heard me just wheezing and, and grasping for air. And I, we went in there and he says, but you're not, bre you're not wheezing like from your lungs, Cheryl. It's coming from your throat. And I'm going, I know it's so weird. And, and not, none of the steam wasn't helping, nothing. So we ran me to the hospital. An hour later, I was in the ICU, hooked up to some serious steroids. Um, I, I ended up in the ICU for three days, um, saw ENT. And he told me basically the same thing that Dr. Le, 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 Dr. Lubovix was, was speaking on where they did um, my ENT that literally did save my life. He did a um, unfortunately failed um, bronchoscopy where they went in and they did the balloon dilation. They took a balloon and they opened up my trachea and, um, and did that a couple of times and tried to get it to, to stay open. When it came back and we were, I woke up from surgery, he said, I, I just, I just know you're, you're going to need a trach, Cheryl, and it's going to be life altering in a good way. And he was so positive in the way he explained it to me and prepared me for it. I went through, I talked to therapists while I was there. I got as much as I could, um, uh, that, that I could possibly get into my mind and my heart that I was going to have a hole in my throat, but that is okay because I'm going to be breathing because breathing isn't an option. And um, I learned to eat, um, learned to talk, learned how to do everything, but the knowledge is what I needed. And that's what gave me a lot of strength and a lot of um, uh, power. Those are all very important questions. And I really appreciate you sharing your story with us. And yep. sorry to cut you a little short. I know no, that's, that's okay, but I do have GPA. So that's it. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. I'm on Rituxin. I'm doing great. Okay. I'm well, done. Thank 